Tonight's topic will fo focus on how black women can strip the masculine traits and tap into their authentic power. This topic stemmed from a conversation between attorney Ebony K. Williams and Iyanla Von Zant. During a conversation about how black women can position themselves in their divinity, Iyanla asked Ebony if she would date a bus driver. Ebony then replied, if he owns the bus. I mean, if he owns it. And then Iyala added, well, that's a problem because the standards and requisites, well, the standards and criteria that we use to measure men is off for who we are as women and who they are in this society. So ladies, what do you, I know you've been seeing this conversation all over social media. What are your thoughts on this conversation? Vivica, let's go to you first. Well, Ebony, baby, you answered that question so wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, you know, choices are everything. And I, I get it, you was being transparent and, and, and straightforward, but boy, did you um, just, just put down a whole group of good, strong men that are hard workers and, and, and work hard. I mean, you know, you just, yes, we all want guys that run companies and this, that, and the third, but I don't know the way she answered it to me. I just thought it was awful. What in the world is going on? I know I didn't just agree with Vivica Fox. Wait, 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 wait. Let me make sure I heard that right. What did you um just just put down a whole group of good strong men that are hard workers and 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 work hard. I mean, you know, you just you really have to be out of order if I can agree with Vivica Fox. I have to say, the two people who surprised me the most in the last week, number one would be DJ Envy. I just couldn't believe that Envy had a real authentic conversation with Ebony and didn't hold back. But Vivica Fox here is number two. Like, what's going on? It's obvious that Vivica knows Ebony was off talking crap about blue collar workers. They all know. I'm just surprised that she admitted it. It reminds me though, before all of this Hollywood stuff, Vivica was a real person, raised by her mom and dad in the Midwest. Now, when she went to Cali for college, you know, people switch up and the rest is history. Vivica also knows that success doesn't usually come in the form of college degrees for a lot of men. She's lived where people are wealthy and not from degrees. But yeah, this is probably the second time I agreed with Vivica Fox ever in all of my reviews here. So this is one to write down. Yeah. Lisa Ray, what do you think? I, I, I'm in the middle because, you know, I can say that I know what she meant, but when you don't say it or articulate it in a way in which, you know, people will make it a sound bite, then you get this right here, which is what we're doing. It's talking about it, you know? Correct. Um, so I, I understand that. I think as a black woman, we get it, you know? But because we are on all so many different levels, there is somebody out there for everybody, yes. you know, at whatever level. And it's someone to be able to grab your hand, pick you up, pull you up, you know what I'm saying? And there's a lot of strong women out there that don't mind what he does. Um, and here's a great example. Remember Ashford and Simpson? Remember she met him in Central Park, you know what I mean? And she pulled him up, took him to church, dust him off, and and they, you know, fellowship together. They they fell in love, they married, and it was the best duo ever, you know? So, um, yeah, I think that she could have answered that with more depth. But let's be honest, most of these women today could never have what Valerie Simpson had. They both believed in the most high and he gave them a lot of protection over their lives and their relationship. These new modern women literally work for the devil. Ashford and Simpson wrote so many hit songs for themselves and others, music that show black people love each other. You know, talking about building love and trust, staying solid as a rock. They wrote a bunch of songs for the greatest, including Marvin Gaye. If you need me, call me, no matter where you are, no matter how far, no worry, baby. Or this one right here. Ain't like the because ain't nothing like the real thing. And you're all I need to get by. 
This is a type of music that people like Ashford and Simpson wrote generations before us. And it's sad because now our generation and the ones under us, Generation Z, they will never experience what these people wrote about. But no, not these heathens today. They want this. Back to Lisa Ray though. It seems like she was attempting to play the middle, but leaning towards Ebony. And we all know Miss Lisa Ray can relate to the follow the money, chasing the dollars aspect of it all. We're talking about a woman that's been playing this game that Ebony's trying to play for a very long time. As I told you before, Lisa Ray is the OG City Girl. She was out there way before the City Girls, the original, the D-Boys girlfriend from the 1980s, 1999, 2000, long before she got with the man from Turks and Caicos who made her a real queen. Remember when she was the first lady of the island? And y'all know it's been almost 20 years and Lisa Ray, she's not dropping that crown yet. I do give Lisa Ray this though. Lisa Ray would never say what Ebony said and not because she's not a real authentic person. She's Hollywood, but she's still Chicago and Mississippi is deep in her veins as well. I just don't think that Lisa would trash working people like that. Talking crazy and just blurting everything out like Tourette's doesn't make you real. Ebony didn't get that lesson yet because she's too busy always trying to be right. I agree. Wow. Yeah, you ladies are on. Let me tell y'all, it's turning up. Claudia, what do you think? Actually, I think if people were being honest, a lot of people would agree with her. But, you know, because someone else did it, we can all point at her and be like, aha, she's being mean. She's putting down the bus driver community. This woman is a woman that went to college and universities and got her several degrees and is a lawyer that probably makes a lot of money. And out of all the talking in circles Ebony was doing, this is one thing that she would not come and clear up. The rich lawyer narrative that they keep running with is just a lie. First off, Ebony was a public defender. And despite what a lot of people think, most lawyers are not rich. It's different levels to this. Now, don't get me wrong, there are lawyers with money, but Ebony wasn't one of them. All law is not the same. It's been documented that public defenders are not paid enough, they are overworked, they get a bunch of cases, and it's extremely stressful. So I'm not saying any of this to downplay public defenders. Claudia is just ignorant to how all of this works. The average pay for a public defender in North Carolina typically falls between $51,000 and $64,000. And that's now in 2023. Titles like doctor and lawyer doesn't mean rich. It's a lot of you watching right now that make more money than what Ebony made as a lawyer. And obviously Ebony was not rich. She admitted to being arrested for allegedly trying to steal $250 designer shoes. Not to mention, she was running from the repo man at one point. What happened is, a lot of deflectors Googled her net worth because one, they didn't even know who Ebony really was. But Google is inaccurate about that number. And no, Ebony is not going to tell you this because she's been faking it until she make it. She believed that the lie makes her look better, so she won't clear it up. That's been her strategy the whole time. Fake it until you make it. She did not get paid much money as a lawyer. She didn't even practice long enough to really have any experience. The first few years as a lawyer, you don't even know what you're doing yet. She also didn't make that much money at Fox. Revolt didn't pay her a million dollars. That's why I'm wondering where is Claudia again? She's got all this money rhetoric from. Again, public defenders don't make a lot of money. Even the public defender, the top public defender in the office, they don't even make a million dollars. So yeah, there are millionaire attorneys out there, but Ebony was not one of them. And I don't think she was putting down bus drivers. She said I, she wanted to date the owner. We've all talked like that. And and I think if you if, if, if we keep it honest, white women don't have to explain this kind of stuff. But when black women do it, we want them so quick to say they're down an entire community. It's so dramatic. Here we go again with this black woman, white woman mess. Claudia is the biggest half black woman with a white mama that's always trying to bait black women into arguing about white women and comparing themselves to them. But every time you turn around, she's trying to pull this emotional strategy on black women, really playing on insecurities to get black women riled up. Since black women called Claudia a colorist years ago, she's been going extra hard trying to find a way to connect and relate to the sisterhood by talking this sister girl talk, she went from a beauty queen 
to now basically coming off as some loud, mad, strong black woman. And because Claudia started talking the sister girl language, black women completely forgot why they fell out with her and she's been playing them like a fiddle now for years. Claudia will do this time and time again. She'll get on a panel, get black women angry, and lead them down some dirt road. It's straight up sabotage. And to address what Claudia was saying about the black woman, white woman thing, no, they don't have to tell white women to date plumbers, bus drivers, and other blue collar workers because they already do. Some white families are ran by white collar men and some are ran by blue collar men. White American women are not running around crapping on service workers because they're taught to respect Paul the plumber, respect Tim the handyman, respect Bob the bus driver, the shoreman. They respect military men. They respect firemen. They respect Larry the long guy. I talk to the wives of these men all the time. White, black, Hispanic, all of them. The truth is a lot of their husbands are at six figures, even seven. Some lower than six figures, but they're all contributing to that generational wealth that Ebony was talking about because they're sticking by their men. They kept their families together. I know a bunch of Marias. She's proud of her husband. Even if he's not making six figures, they are both putting in work, but in different ways. They have different roles and duties. She's not just sitting up in the house trying to figure out how to order Balenciaga. And guess what? They're happy, working hard, blue collar work, honest work. They send their children to school if they want to go or they teach them trades to be able to earn money at 18 years old instead of having to spend the block. Every black family I can vouch for that's doing well, personally, is usually because of the husband's blue collar work. Every single diesel mechanic we know makes six figures. They make more money than Ebony did working as a public defender. But this is what I'm talking about. Black people only respect fake people on television. If you don't have a number on your back, or a ball in your hand, then you're nothing to a lot of these people. You gotta be tap dancing on stage or have some sort of advanced degree for them to think that you're somebody. When black men with trace and their wives are the ones responsible for the numbers we do have in black home ownership, they actually have equity, not just a bunch of bimbos buying $700,000 houses with high interest rates, Ebony. Yeah, I can't get over how Ebony was basically bragging about black women getting scammed out here with these prices. They're about to be upside down in a second, and then they'll represent the highest number of foreclosures as well. At that point, when it all falls down, not only will it be white collar investors coming in to scoop up those properties, but you're going to see blue collar families who also invest as well. They will come in and buy the same property for way cheaper than you locked it in for and it's going to be in their family's portfolio. People like Claudia and Ebony, they love pushing out these lies to make these rebels feel good and nobody's telling them the truth, which is why a lot of them will find themselves in the same position identical to 2008. It's so dramatic. Um, she's, she thinks she's better than him. She's this, she's that. And then she followed up. And I do think, you know, people may be turned up by the way she comes off. She's very intelligent. Having a degree doesn't make her intelligent and not having a degree does not make you dumb. Talking over people or talking fast doesn't make you intelligent, nor does it make you a great communicator because you can't listen. You're simply fast talking, slick talking people into believing you just said something profound when you didn't even say anything. That's not intelligence. That's idiocy. And, you know, I could see how people could, I could see how people could be offended if they did in fact drive the bus, but I don't think she was shitting on bus drivers. She said what she wanted. How was her preference wrong? I agree with her being able to have her preference. Ebony can want whatever she wants. I'll tell you one thing though. How's that working out for you, Ebony? But no, her preference isn't the problem. She's the one who can't attract or keep her preference. And yes, I understand that's as far as the feminists can take this conversation. That's the only argument they continue to make. But the real problem here with Ebony is that she's trying to make her preference black women's preference. Listen, we could care less about Ebony and her preference. She's 40 and single making PSAs like this. I'm telling you, she already blew her chances. So no, Ebony, she lost and now she's trying to bring other black women down with her. Misery loves company. I'm not the one to try to change old women. I've said this time and time again, you cannot mold stale bread. 
They better go over there to a Yala for an exorcism or something. I'm talking about souls being targeted here. The young souls that Ebony is trying to target to follow her down the dirt road to misery. We got to sit here all day and hear men say what they want. You got to have a big bone. You got to have this, got to have that. If I don't fit to that character, if, if those, those traits, should I be like, oh, he's a this, or he's a that. He don't like girls like me. I just think we got to just give people a little bit of grace. And then the sound bites. I think you're right, you right, Claudia, because that's what, I, that's what I mean. It's like when you, sound we bite. black women, we should get it because we have said that before. But yes. because they want to take it and run with it. And if you're that kind of person, i.e. me, you know what I mean? I have been Lisa Ray said, and I'm like, Lisa Ray said what now? You know what I mean? But you know what you what I mean? So I can't no longer hold on to that. You know what I mean? I have to say what I mean and 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 take out the narrative of what they thought I could I th thought they heard I said. But Lisa, Ebony did that. She cleaned it up twice, but the paperwork is still dirty. Nobody is taking a sound bite from her and running with it. And I understand Lisa may not have looked at the full clips, but by this time, a lot of people have reviewed the full clips. Her full interview with Iyanla, then she came back and doubled down again on her show. And after that, she went on The Breakfast Club and controlled the conversation for most of the 40 minutes that she was on there. Over a half a million people saw that. So no, nobody's just running with anything. Ebony just exposed herself all three times. She further confirmed her misandry, black feminism, her wannabe elitism, because I keep telling you this woman is not elite. I have real female lawyers watching me right now. They support this channel. They're in better positions than Ebony right now. Just because they're not hosting an internet show or they didn't make it to the blogs or the breakfast club doesn't mean that they're beneath her. But yeah, I understand if Lisa may have said something for 10 seconds before and people didn't hear the full five minute response, that's not what this is though, Lisa. Ebony talked and talked and talked. She literally won't shut up. That's why we're all here. And not add anything to it because I would say my own statement like, boom, period. That's what I mean. And agreeing with what Vivica said, it did come off awful if you only heard what's in the sound bite. Of course. Okay. But, but, but like, Claudia, you, can I say this though? Let this be a lesson to this beautiful lady that you have power because I had to learn myself how that when you do interviews, how to, if you say, so, it's not what you say, it's how you say it. So let this be a lesson to her is what I mainly am trying to say. I'm not trying to come across as a mean girl. I get what she was trying to say, but I'm saying it's like, once you start getting into a certain level of recognition and stuff like that, you now don't want everyone coming at you because you you've said something that you honestly didn't mean it. I've said it before and didn't mean for something to come across toward a certain community. But you know what I did? I owned it immediately and said, nope, that's not what I meant. That was a sound bite. I was glad to hear that the young lady, Ebony, went back and tried to clarify things. But let this be a lesson to her is, is the main thing. That's the thing. It wasn't just a sound bite. She didn't clean up anything. She doubled down, tripled down, backpedaled, and then quadrupled down again. But yeah, I still can't believe I agree with Vivica the most here. And then she was attacked because she was engaged to a white man at one point. So now they think that's a whole narrative on her whole entire life. And this woman has always spoke up for black people. That's right. Right, Selena? Claudia, no, you're twisting it. People didn't come at her for being engaged to a white man who she's no longer with, by the way. He didn't marry her. It was her acting like she's helping black men while directing her misandry towards them. And then at the same time, talking pro-black blaming white people. She was trying to take both sides of the argument and it didn't work. Baby, but as I said, that then opens Pandora's box. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Listen, all amazing points, all great points. And, and, I, and, and this is why I think that this conversation needs to be, you know, extended in many areas, especially with our black men involved. But I, let me just say this as a married woman, I've been married for 16 years. Selena and her ex-NBA player husband, they're still together. I'm happy they worked it all out. Although they went on marriage boot camp about eight years ago, they had issues with their marriage. Really because Selena wears the pants, her husband is quiet, submissive, and just goes with the program. Sadly though, a lot of these strong black women, they're acting like that's what they want, submissive husbands. It's 100% out of order. As far as their marriage, that's their preference. But feminine women, they don't want a submissive husband. So she should probably add that disclaimer. And let me just say this. I understand what Ebony K was saying, okay? 
first of all, if that's her preference, preference, that's her preference. It has absolutely nothing to do with 100% of the people that, that are commenting, including us. Mm -hmm. However, what we need to understand is, first of all, we need to reactualize the blue collar worker. We need to re-identify that worker because there are bus drivers in New York, honey, that make six figures. Let's be very clear with pensions and, and everything else to, to go with it. What I understand from her though, which which I'm gonna lean on her, her side a little bit on this is, and not even really her side, cause I don't know if she meant this. She's make six figures. Women like us that met, that have money, that want a man that has, you know, equal or equally yoke, like Lisa Ray says, we don't want your money. We want you to have it for you. See, Selena, that may be you, but these other modern women, they want the man's money for them. We see time and time again, their money is for them and the man's money is also for them. They use their money for whatever. They use his money for whatever. And he's still paying all the bills, which is why the amount of money these women make, it doesn't matter. The man won't benefit from it anyway because you need to have that money for your ego, for your stance, for your pride, so that you can come into relationships strong. Because if not, you're gonna come into relationships insecure. You're gonna pressure, you're gonna, you're gonna um, blame us for making more. Because if not, she's gonna treat you like trash. She's not going to respect you. She's gonna always have an attitude, which is why most men don't entertain these sassy boss chicks. They let them stay alone to snuggle up with their coin. It Listen, it's going to cause problems down the line, possibly. It's just like if a man has a, a roaming eye or anything else. If we see something in a relationship that may not be in alignment with us, which could be that you don't make enough money, that could be a problem along the, down the line. It could cause depression, anxiety, and so many other things in the relationship. Not to yes. say that would happen with all men, but there are so many other reasons. She doesn't need your money, guys. Ebony doesn't need your money. She just wants somebody to be equally yoked, someone that can help her grow and you all grow together. And I think that's what she was trying to say. She just didn't communicate it like she should have. That's a lie too. If Ebony lost her job tomorrow and couldn't get another one, she wouldn't be able to survive. I hope single black men continue to weed the Ebony's out of their lives. They are nothing but blood suckers. These women have been compromised to the point of no return. And for the record, I don't hate Ebony. I'm really indifferent to her personally. My problem here is not about Ebony's opinion or her preference. She's a middle-aged lady, who cares? The problem is the programming that they are pushing to destroy black women and really to continue to destroy the family. Most black women, of course not all, but most black women are falling for these traps. You've been keeping up with the Kardashians, loving hip hop, Atlanta Housewives. All of this is fake. All of it is bringing you further and further away from your purpose. And as long as you continue to disobey the orders of the Most High, you will continue to suffer the consequences. It's not a coincidence that you're having all these mental attacks and a lot of other stuff is going on. The most free, the most boss chicks also represents the most misery, the most oppression. Let's go ahead and get the conversation started. Let me know what you think about this discussion below. Special thank you to Sabrina. I appreciate you, Sabrina, for all of your support. Also, shout out to Lamar B. Don't forget that you can support this channel as well. Links to Cash App and PayPal are below. Ladies, fellas, want a balance analysis? Want the truth from a woman's perspective? Then you're going to want to subscribe to this channel and don't forget to like and share.